Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Kinexus quarterly updates webinar. My name is Ryan Rippey. I'm the customer enablement manager here at Kinexus, and I am joined today by Kinexus CEO Greg Jacobson. Greg, I appreciate the time today. Thank you very much. I am really looking forward to this. And aside from my CEO responsibilities, I manage product. So Ryan always likes for me to join during these quarterly updates. So I'm looking forward to it. Greg, I chose this this wonderful uh, cover slide here to, to get our webinar started off. So for everyone, we just actually had our mid-annual uh, meeting here in Austin, Texas, where the entire company was able to come together for a couple of days. And one of our team building exercises was to go throw some axes. So you'll notice in the picture here, this was actually the championship round uh, right before we we got started. Greg, do you want to comment just on, on what happened after this picture was taken? We, absolutely, Ryan, we had a really nice dinner afterwards and uh, the whole team was there. Uh, no, I think what, what Ryan's trying to get at, and, and while we didn't plan this for this this update, but but you're looking at the, the championship round, the beginning of the championship round, and Ryan will be carrying the, the championship axe throwing badge for the next year here at Kinexus. Congratulations, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Uh, yes, I, I'm sorry. I don't think we, uh, we prepped for that, but uh, I appreciate the, uh, the uh, insight there. Um, so for everyone new to the webinar series, welcome. The purpose of these webinars is for us to review some of the biggest features that we've released um, each quarter. So today, Greg and I will spend the next half hour to 45 minutes here uh, exploring features from our Q2 releases of this year. Uh, here at Kinexus, we are big fans of Simon Sinek and the start with why approach. So I'll allow Greg to, to do some analysis on the why behind each of the features that we discuss here today. And then I'd like to follow that up with just a brief walkthrough of, of really the how in Kinexus. Um, but before we get started, please allow me to just go over some housekeeping items so the webinar is being recorded, so we'll be able to, to check out all of that banter back and forth. Uh, we'll go ahead and send out the slides for anyone interested, as well as that recording uh, to everyone after the webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to go ahead and type those out into our chat box. We're going to do our best to answer those in real time, uh, as well as at the very end of the webinar, uh, if we have some time left over. So taking a look at what we have on our agenda for today. So the, the two big releases we've had since our Q1 updates webinar were 2.2.8 and 2.2.9. Both of these releases were huge, Greg. Uh, I've narrowed it down to five of the biggest features from each release. 2.2.8 um, itself encompassed 26 improvements and new features, and 2.2.9 actually topped that with 33 improvements and new features. Um, so some of the items we're going to be taking a look at today include time tracking, more advanced ROI features, uh, threshold charts, resolution to all workflows, standard work, bulk edit, uh, as well as a few others. Um, all right, Greg, sh should we go ahead and hop into Kinexus and take a look at what we got? Yeah, absolutely. And I think while, while we're hopping into Kinexus, I'll just add that we here at Kinexus develop in an agile methodology that, as I'm sure many of you guys already know, is kind of a software implementation of lean principles. And so we typically try to keep releases as small as possible. Sometimes, though, that sprint doesn't really fit in a nice, you know, two to three week development cycle. And so this was just two back to back releases that were that they just there wasn't a good line in the sand to, to stop the code at one point. And so it ended up creating and two massive releases. So here we go. All right. So Greg, I went ahead and created a board for us to kind of work off of today on the webinar. Um, so you'll see in the top left there, freestyle card of just the agenda and the features we'll be going through. So I want to start off with uh, 2.2.8, which was released back in May. Uh, the first feature I have here is our time tracking. So I'm going to go ahead and click into uh, an example improvement we have here. And maybe we can talk a little bit to uh, the time tracking why and, and this feature that we've uh, added in. Yeah, so really three, four years ago, we had almost no project management capabilities in Kinexus. And over over the years, we've get, 
getting more and more feedback that, that we want to be able to manage more complex projects. And I think time tracking is a good example of us being able to do that. And so we've added time tracking. We can put it on a template. That makes sense. So you obviously wouldn't do this on a just do it or a really small improvement, but perhaps a something larger in scope, certainly projects, maybe some strategic A3s. And it really allows you the ability to, to go in it and log time that you spent. So you can get a gauge on how much time you think it will take to complete a project or an improvement, and then how much time is tracked against that. And it'll even show you if you're over the time. And uh, we have gotten some really great feedback from it so far. So show us how it works, Ryan. Yeah, so just kind of a, a little outline here. The, the time tracking section you'll see is, is underneath our date section. Uh, this has to be turned on by your CE representative. Once we go ahead and add that, it will show up under the date section uh, on your standard layout. If you're using a, a custom layout and like to have that as a part of your custom layout, you can also do that as well. And, and this will, of course, export if you're ever trying to get this uh, particular workflow item into PDF form. Um, so once you have that time tracking put in place, anyone who's going to be a team member uh, on your workflow can go ahead and log some work. So here we've kind of set up some time tracking. You'll see the estimated amount that we've established for how long this item will take is two hours. Um, so I went ahead and logged 30 minutes. We'll see we have some remaining time, an hour and 30. Once you want to come in and log some work, you simply hit the log work option here. You'll be able to choose the specific person within Kinexus, the amount of time that was spent, whether that's in hours or minutes, uh, the particular date, and then you can add a description as well. And so all of this will be obviously tracked within that time tracking section. It'll also be tracked within your uh, timeline on your item as well. If I go ahead and expand the time tracking so we can get a, a better look at this here, uh, we can see the breakdown. This is really going to be that log of, of all the time that's been tracked. If we need to make any edits to our estimate or make a new estimate, we can do so. And so as you mentioned, Greg, just another feature that really can help uh, for more of that kind of project management approach to your, your bigger initiatives that you're working on. And time, time tracking is just part of you know, a base Kinexus um, package, if you will. There, you don't need any add-ons to get, to get time tracking added right. onto this. You just need to, to reach out to your CE folks. Yep, no, uh, no add-ons there. Just uh, as long as everybody knows about it, we can go ahead and turn that on for you. So Greg, while we're in this uh, particular improvement, the next thing I wanna talk about are some of the advanced ROI features that we added in 2.2.8. And the first is all around investment. So if I go ahead and, and resolve this improvement here, we'll notice that there's a little section of where we can include investment. Um, so if we wanna calculate funds, time, resource, Greg, give us a little kind of background on, on this particular so, feature. Well, really there's kind of two customer profiles that we see. We see the majority of our customers not spending a lot of time wanting the fidelity of knowing exactly how much maybe time, money, resources uh, were saved on a particular project. And uh, then we have another bucket of customers that are really interested in, in getting very refined into the specificities on exactly how much and when something um, benefited the organization, and so we have we have people that that if you're interested in that, then I'd highly recommend taking a look at the advanced ROI module if you are not already um, subscribed to that. Part of that is, uh, of course, more features and more refined features on on the the areas of the product that that everyone has access to, which is well, how much did this impact the organization? But if you're really trying to get into the um, understanding the nuances of what would the benefit of the improvement or the project was to the organization, it's important to know how much money and time was spent actually doing that. And so we allow you to, to do that here now with a investment area of the resolution. And this, once again, would need to be configured and you'll be able to configure it just the way you want. But the, the way to think of this is this is just how much energy, whether that's time or money or resources, were were spent contributing to getting that improvement project or or that improvement across the finish line. Awesome, Greg. And just from a functionality standpoint, for those of you familiar with with going in and logging impact on on your particular improvements in the system, it's a very similar flow. Uh, as Greg mentioned, the the three types of investment that you want might want to track could be something along the lines of funds, 
time, resources. So when you come in and actually select one of these options, you'll be able to add that specific value, whether it's one time recurring. So in this case, very similar to a, a revenue generation or cost savings from an impact, uh, as well as, for example, with resources, if you wanted to come in here and say, maybe there was a particular you know, resource such as aluminum or steel or however you want to track those uh, invested resources, you'll be able to do that with this feature as well. Um, so also, Greg, while we're here on this screen, uh, if we take a look at did this result in change? So for our impact, we also rolled out with the advanced ROI module the ability for impact splitting and, and allocation for locations. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so so what we what we have here is this recognition that when when we're thinking about impact, there's a couple different ways we can we can view impact. So one way we've always been able to give you that view in is where did the improvement or the project originate from? Whose idea was it initially? Then the the second view that we've given is well where did the where did the work actually take place? You know, I'm I'm an ER doc, so I'll use a healthcare example. Maybe the idea came from an emergency medicine technician, but was actually implemented in the cardiology department. So we've given you that ability. What we haven't given you until now is the ability to say, well, what area of the organization did it impact? And so with this uh, next step on advanced ROI, you'll be able to not only indicate where, where it came from and where the work was done, but then where did the impact benefit the organization? So for example, if you were to do um, you know, cost savings, then you could say, okay, well, the, the, this saved one to one area of my organization, you know, fifty thousand dollars, and another area of my organization, twenty five thousand dollars, and it really gives you the ability to to get more refinement into how the ROI is benefiting the organization. Great, Greg, and yeah. So the way that I configured this is, I've, I've used the three examples here. First, with the time savings, I configure this to work exactly as it has in the past. So you'll notice there's there's not necessarily an impact location we can choose here. Now, for example, with this advanced ROI cost savings, I've made this required. So when I go in and add a value here, you'll see we have this section for the impact location, little tooltip explaining, as you mentioned, who's gonna benefit from this, where we can choose the particular location within uh, the network in Kinexus within our organization. And you'll see, for example, this is required. So we can say, that you know this this impacted Kinexus customer experience, for example, maybe it was a thousand dollars here. Um, and so once you've added this in, you can also maybe do a copy of this, and maybe it was now you know maybe it also saved five thousand dollars in a different location. So again, speaking to being able to allocate uh, how much was was saved or, or how much revenue was generated. Uh, impacting that specific location. And this could also be made optional as well. So for the advanced ROI revenue generation, uh, you'll see when I add a value, I have that impact location, but I don't necessarily have to include this in here. So a lot of different configuration and, and functionality behind um, this, this impact um, splitting. And again, this is all uh, encompassed within that advanced ROI add-on module. All right, Greg, so moving right along, let's come back into our improvement uh, I've gone ahead and created a threshold chart nested underneath this improvement. So threshold chart was one of the, the, the new features that was in our 2.2.8 release, uh, which is giving us a, another chart option, Kinexus. And Greg, I'm sure you see these a lot working in the ER. Right, Go ahead. Yeah, so there's a lot of different kind of applications for this. We, we feel like technology is really good at, at monitoring lots of different things. And perhaps just notifying you on things that you want to be notified about. And I think threshold charts is a great example of that. So for example, we have a lot of organizations that'll set a goal out. Um, they, let's say they want to have um, the customer satisfaction and their customer satisfaction is at 70% and they, they really want to get it uh, to 85% by the end of the year. They could set different kind of thresholds that they would be notified about. So, well, let's just say here, customer satisfaction score. So in, in January, this organization started out at 60%, but they really wanted to get it above 90%. And so as those data points come along, they can be compared to a threshold line, and that can trigger a set of notifications or kind of alerts to make you aware of either good things happening or bad things happening. 
really the, the use cases here are anytime you want data to come alive and to reach out to you and make you aware of something, and you're trying to get to a certain level or you don't want to get above or below a certain level, then you should really think about using a threshold chart to accomplish that goal. Awesome. And so, yeah, taking a look kind of at just this example threshold threshold chart we have here in place, as you mentioned, Greg, um, we have our baseline here at 70. We have a, a target threshold at 90. So based on how we configure this and the data points that we enter in, all of the color configuration, uh, calculating our goal, all of that is going to be set up for us. So just to give everyone a, a quick uh, look into creating a threshold chart in Kinexus. Whenever you're creating one of the, the chart types in Kinexus, it really walks you through exactly what you need to add. So I'm going to find, let's find our chart here at the bottom and go into our threshold chart. So when you're creating that threshold chart, the first step within the threshold chart is to uh, add your data. And so it's going to take you into uh, that threshold line and, and creating a particular series here. So here's where you're actually going to set up the thresholds that you want in place. Um, so that first question is, you know, do you want your target to be greater or less than a number? The way I like to look at this is, are you playing baseball or, or are you playing, um, what's another example? Um, playing baseball golf. or golf. There you go. Golf. So if you're playing baseball versus golf, you know, obviously with baseball, you're probably going to want your target to, to be greater as opposed to golf. It's usually the, the lower score that is, is the desired outcome. Um, and so once you've gone ahead and, and, and figured out what, what your target's going to be, then is when you can come in and, and start to configure, you know, how, how markers are going to show up on your particular chart, uh, how you want to be able to visualize those based on the color, you can add your threshold. You have the ability to add both the secondary and tertiary threshold. And of course, you can add your baseline in here as well. So once you've put all this in place and then go in and start to populate with the actual data points, that is how your threshold chart is going to go ahead and, and populate um, with the particular colors and, and everything we saw in our example before. And so, Greg, the, the, I guess the next big piece to, to our threshold chart was we also introduced the ability to uh, set a goal calculator and visualizer on that chart. So some people may have noticed when we go back into the threshold chart that we were taking a look at, we had a goal calculator that we were able to add into that chart. So I'm just going to come back into that customer satisfaction chart here. And you'll notice over on the right hand side, you'll see we have a goal uh, and it looks like it's at 100% right now. So based off of our most recent uh, calculation for July, we actually had a, a 90 rating, which was what our target threshold was, right? So here we can see that we're 100% at our target goal. Um, Greg, anything else you want, you want to talk about here before we kind of see how we can visualize this on a board as well? I just don't see a Kinexus customer not getting value from this feature just every every company we look at has set up goals and has um, certain thresholds that they they want to try to either be above or below, and this is a really powerful way to to get Kinex to help you do that. Right, and so as you'll see here over in the top right, we have our goal that's being calculated, and this can actually be added to what's called a widget card that we've introduced. So if we go back to our our board that we're working off of here today. You notice underneath our agenda, we've gone ahead and added. Uh, a, a widget card, which is allowing us to visualize, in this case, our, our CSAT goal year to date. And if we go ahead and actually click into this, it'll, of course, bring us back to that chart where we're able to see uh, all of the data points uh, across, in this case, the last uh, six to seven months. Um, so again, another great feature uh, as a part of your threshold charts. If you need any help with, with getting that goal set up, um, just to let everyone know, if you come in and edit your data, in the little options section at the top is where you'll be able to add that goal series to your threshold charts. Uh, so another nice feature to, to help enhance um, being able to look into your goals on those KPIs that you're tracking. Greg, the last ticket that I wanted to take a look at here um, was just something small we did with, uh, with some notification window enhancements. So if we come back to our, our default board, I'm going to go ahead and click into the notification bell. So a few things that we've added in here. The first is the ability to sort your notifications. Um, so by default, this is always going to have the, the newest notification displayed at the top. Uh, if you're someone who, who has a lot of notifications, Greg, I know you're guilty of this sometimes. 
Um, if you want to go ahead and sort those and, and start to knock out some of the older notifications in the system, the little sort option here at the bottom will give you, give you the ability to do that. Um, and beyond that, we'll also have the ability now to clear everything out, which was something that yeah, sometimes it drove me crazy. I know a lot of our customers requested this. So when you actually come in and hit clear, you'll be able to clear all of your notifications uh, from that particular screen. So Greg, I mean, we can speak more to this. When I, when I do trainings, this is one of the, the first things that I point out in Kinexus. When you log into the system, jump into your notifications, any new updates, comments, status changes of, of items that, that you have uh, either configured to, to be alerted on or you're a team member on, this is really gonna help you just kind of standardize your workflow in the system. Yeah, and, and I would say, I mean, when I'm thinking, if I'm doing work solo in Kinexus, then I'm 95% of the time working through the notification screen. So my workflow is log into Kinexus, I hit the blue bell, and I start going through notifications. And what I was finding is because, because yes, Ryan, I, I, I do get lots of notifications. I probably get, I don't know, 100 a week. And I was finding that sometimes I go in, I knock out 30 of them, I have an extra five minutes, and I want to just catch up on what's going on in the system. But I was always doing the most recent ones, and so then I wouldn't get to the oldest ones. And so right. the sort was something that was really important to me. And then we kept hearing feedback that said, hey, we just want to clear, I just want to clear them all out, start afresh. And so we, we did we did give that uh, ability um, to not only clear your your blue dot, we call them blue dot notifications, just things that have happened on an improvement since the last time you looked at them, the easiest way to think of those, but also your your kind of proper notifications that those those that are in red, things that are directly related to you because you're on the team of an improvement or project. So you're, you should be living out of the notification screen or at least be quite aware of it if you're doing individualized work. And then when we're in a when we're in a group setting and we're doing a work session or we're doing a meeting, then we're almost always doing that out of some board because we've optimized a board to do a certain workflow, what the goal of that is. So couldn't agree more. So let's switch gears a little bit, Greg. We're going to move now into our, our most recent 2.2.9 release, which came out at the end of June. Uh, the first uh, feature that I want to take a look at, which was really a, a big deal, was being able to add resolution to all workflows. You want to talk a little bit about that, Greg? So re really almost since the beginning of Kinexus time, it really when we, we started to have projects added to Kinexus, people have been asking, hey, I want to be able to put an impact on a project. And we, we fretted quite a bit about the, the issue of, of double counting and really wanting to keep things as consistent as possible. So really a line in the thing that we had drawn in the past was, if you want to put an impact on a project, just, just put that impact as part of a improvement. As time has gone on, we, the, the amount of top-down work in Kinexus has grown exponentially. And it, it really became obvious that it was a, a true pain point to ask people to just nest an improvement only to track an impact. And so the impetus for this was is on a project to, to be able to track an impact directly on that project without having to, to nest improvements. Once we started going down this pathway, there, there was actually a whole bunch of other benefits to this that we, we ended up finding out. Um, so, for instance, you could even put simple resolutions on tasks, and you couldn't do that before as well. So, I, I think overall, I feel comfortable with the direction we're going, and I really can't wait to see how people are going to start um, using this this in Kinexus. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself, Greg. So, projects, have, as, as you mentioned, can now be configured to directly measure that impact without having to nest an improvement underneath the project. So, here I've gone ahead and, and created this this project workflow in Kinexus, I've configured it so that when I come in and actually want to complete work on this, I'm gonna go through that resolution process. And so very similar to what we've seen with improvements in the past, once I go into that resolution screen, now I can go ahead and calculate that direct impact on a project. Um, and, and to your point, Greg, if maybe you don't want to include impact types or no change reasons or anything that like that during the resolution process, Maybe you want to have a, a resolution on a task just simply for kind of the, the approval aspect of whether something was done correctly or not. Uh, you, you can use that as a, a use case as well. Um, so, so yeah, this, this was a, a really big feature for us. 
Uh, and I think for, for some of those project oriented um, customers out there, they're, they're going to be getting a lot of use out of that. And, um, and I just want to add, Ryan, this is, sure. this is something that you have to ask us to configure yes. this into your system. So if you're happy with the way things work and you, you like the fact that projects don't have impacts and you want to keep everything as you've been using it for the last you know, five years or so, then, then just keep doing what you want. This is one of those things that if you want to opt into this type of situation, we can now support that. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. So the next feature, Greg, that was a, a really big deal within our 2.2.9 uh, release was all around standard work. And so with standard work, you can pre-populate workflows with frequent items to help standardize any improvement methodology. So this allows you to create projects and improvements with specific to-do items that are automatically nested. So what I'm going to do real quickly, Greg, is I'm going to create a, let's say I have a PDSA project here in the system. And so let's title this PDSA standard work. And so once and I go while, in, while go Ryan, ahead. I would say Ryan, while you're, while you're kind of building this, we, if you, if you've heard us talk about different kind of improvement methodologies, you've heard us say that we're, we're improvement methodology agnostic, meaning if you in your organization finds that a PDSA framework is a successful way for you to think about improvement, that's great. Or if DMAIC is a proper way for, for your organization, then that's great. Or if you're really into A3s, then once again, that's great too. And so the standard work kind of idea is, is whenever there's kind of repetition in what you're doing with regard to doing improvement work, then what you're going to see Ryan demo for us for in a second is going to significantly help kind of the friction of setting that up. And I'll just, just for clarification, when we talk about standard work, we're talking about the standard work of improvement. And so that's the, that's the main use case of what you're going to see here. So Ryan, kick it off. Yeah, thanks, Greg. So what, what I've done is I've gone ahead and created that, that PDSA standard work project here. And as I scroll down, what you'll see is that I have these specific tasks that have automatically been generated within this PDSA project. And so for, again, anyone who is, is new to the, the PDSA language, uh, what that stands for is the four steps of plan, study, uh, do, and act. And so if, for example, you wanted to break those down into particular tasks uh, that your, your users are going to have to go through in Kinexus, we can go ahead and set those up. And I've actually taken it a step further, Greg, and I've made these particular tasks dependent on the completion of the prior task. So, for example, if I was to come into to our study task here, you'll see that this is actually waiting on the do and then the act is waiting on this. So this is one way that we can take it a step further when we're setting up your standard work um, to allow for, for really that specific process, that specific workflow that you're looking to go through and standardize in Kinexus. And, and as I'm seeing this, I'm thinking most organizations that we work with are understaffed and improvement experts, right? I mean, we would, we're, we're all passionate about improvement and we would love there to be, you know, one improvement expert for a hundred employees, let's say, but oftentimes we're interacting in an organization where that ratio might be one to a thousand. And we've actually shown that, that with Kinexus, you can do that type of ratio in a really scalable, efficient way but still do good improvement work. And this is one of the ways that you can ensure that kind of good proper mindset and good kind of flow is occurring when someone is doing, for, for instance, a you know, project that, that you, you really want them to be thinking through these individualized steps. And uh, I, think, I think our improvement experts are, are really gonna absolutely love this, this new feature. Yeah, we, we've already seen it really uh, become a hit with, with our customers, Greg. And, and just so everyone knows that the way that standard work currently works in Kinexus is you do want to reach out to your CE representative to help get that set up. Uh, however, this is something that we are looking to make customer facing so that you will ultimately have the ability to go in and configure that standard work to your needs. Um, and that's actually... I, I, one of the, go ahead. I would just say I, I should I should indicate that when we release this 
in the version that we released this in beta version. So it's been right. in a, a limited kind of release, um, and and we anticipate here pretty shortly to to make it uh, a little bit broader release. I would say, yeah, I would say timetable wise, it, it's definitely a big focus for us. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about our, our user conference um, before we before we head out today, but um, that, that's going to be a, a very big theme for us there. We have some particular training that we're going to be doing all around this. So hopefully within that kind of timetable, we'll be able to uh, allow customers to go in there and, and configure their own standard work. Um, so Greg, wh while we're in here, the, the next ticket I want to take a look at, or the next feature, excuse me, uh, was all around the, the re recursive project copy, uh, which is truly uh, amazing at, at how, how deep we can get uh, with, with copying you know, nested items. If you remember, the, the way that Kinexus worked was you could only copy that first level of nested items. So if you had a, a very top level project um, that you wanted to copy, you know, the items directly underneath that, all of those items that were nested underneath those items, uh, it, it could be pretty time consuming. Uh, and so what we've done, we'll see here, if I go in to actually hit the ellipses here to copy this, we're gonna go through a, a much more advanced copy process. Greg, uh, a little bit of background before we kind of get in the weeds here. Did I lose you, Greg? Apologize about that. Probably the, the use case that we saw that that needed this the most, and, and I think it's going to be something that's just going to trickle through through our customer base. But the initial use case was we have a, a very large um, healthcare organization, and they're doing um, strategy deployment across uh, over 100 hospitals, and they use a very similar framework in each one. But it is it's a pretty complex structured project that had multiple levels, and to recreate that was quite laborious. And so um, by adding this ability to go several levels down of being able to copy a pretty complex project structure made that really easy to deploy uh, you know, across you know, dozens if not hundreds of sites that are, are doing a similarly structured activity. So walk us through how, how you would actually use this. Thing. Yeah, sure. So just taking kind of a deeper dive here, as you noticed, when I went in to, to copy this particular PDSA project from the ellipses, uh, I could go ahead and just copy that particular item. Or if I want to get, for example, those nested tasks that I have, I can select the copy nested items as well. And so this is where we're going to start to take a look at how, how deep we can go with this. Um, so for example, by default here, once you select the copy nested items, it's going to ask you how many levels do you want to go. So if you want to do just that first level, you can do so. Now, if you do have multiple levels underneath that, you can select all levels. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a second. But if you just want to do that first level, the next question is going to ask if you want to copy all of the different workflows in that first level, or if not, what particular workflows, for example, project charts, improvements, or tasks do you want to copy? Um, so again, it allows you to get very granular with, with what particular items you want to copy. Let's take a look at, for example, if we wanted to get all levels included within our copying. So once we go ahead and select that option, now it's going to ask us, do we want to copy all of those types? So if not, we would select no and, and choose the particular types. And then for those subsequent levels, the, the levels underneath that first level, how detailed do we want to go there? Do we want to copy all of those items or do we want to specify which particular workflows? And you'll notice this is going to work for the first 100 items to be copied. So if, if you had some very elaborate uh, project that included more than 100 items, it's just going to grab those first 100. But I think it, it should be able to uh, encompass the workflows that, that our customers have in place. Um, and so once you go ahead and, and decide what you want to copy, understand this cannot be undone. Don't want to shoot yourself in the foot by copying too much because that will be a, a very manual delete process. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and copy that. And then taking a look at your copied item, you'll be able to see the particular items in this case uh, that have been copied along with that as well. So definitely helps with, uh, with your workflow, allows you to, to get, as you mentioned, Greg, all of those items that, that might be going on in a much more, uh, a bigger strategic initiative that you're working on in the system uh, without having to copy things individually. Uh, so we talked we a little bit about- We predict that that would be a, we predict that that would be 
a feature that's going to be used more by improvement experts or higher oh, yes. advanced users than Kinexus, that what we just showed you. So we're going to switch gears now, Greg. I'm going to drop, jump out of our, our PDSA. Let's get over into our list view. I want to talk a little bit about bulk edit. Um, this was a, a very big ticket for us. A lot of customers that were interested in this. Uh, whenever you are specifically in a list view, you're now going to have the ability to bulk change items in Kinexus. So before I kind of go through that, Greg, do you want to give us a little bit of background on, on this particular feature? And this is, this is all related to people doing massive amounts of work in Kinexus now. Um, we have literally doubled the amount of work in Kinexus being done every single year for the last four years. And with that, one of the things that uh, we, you know, people have been requesting that are really doing quite a bit of work in here is they want to go in and, and be able to change a whole bunch of of improvements or projects or whatever is on the list, uh, a specific thing, and they want to change them all with, with just one or two clicks versus having to literally go in, let's say, for example, to change a due date. You want to change a due date on 20 items. You have to open 20 items. You have to click edit due date, change the date, et cetera. Now you have a really you know, simplified way, streamlined way with just a few clicks to be able to do that. Yeah, so again, this is specifically here in list view. Once you're in the list view, if you come over to the ellipses, you'll notice the option to bulk change. And so once you go ahead and select this, it'll allow you to select the particular items that you want to make that change for. And then up here where it says bulk change from this little picker drop down, as Greg mentioned, you can come in here, you can add a team member, you could maybe change a date, the due date or review date on an item, uh, maybe change, update an attribute, as well as add a comment on, on each of those particular items. Um, so you'll be able to do this here. We're in the list section of Kinexus. You can also do this in the list view uh, on a card, or if you are taking a look at maybe some nested items in a workflow, you'll be able to do this in both a, a list and detail view for, for those nested items in a workflow as well. Um, so definitely, again, when, when it comes to uh, bigger uh, amounts of data, being able to, to make that one change across all of those, this should be a, a very useful feature for you. And this is going to keep in mind everyone's permissions on what they can and can't do. This isn't a, you know, a way for a, a user to go rogue in Kinexus, if you will. But right. it will consider what your permission is on that item you're trying to change and either allow you to or to not use that. Once again, I think this is going to be something that um, advanced users in Kinexus are going to find a ton of value from. Absolutely. And the last, uh, last feature I want to take a look at, Greg, is, is around some of the enhancements we made to the impact summary report. So I'm going to jump over into our report section and let's uh, take a look at one of our most popular reports here, the impact summary. And just to make sure we're, we're taking a look at the data I want to see here, I'm going to switch over to our large health system and our network. Um, so taking a look at this, Greg, so two, two features we've added in. The first is showing some, some totals on the impact summary for each financial impact type. So if you find yourself in a situation where you have, for example, uh, multiple uh, cost savings and, and you just have them name something different in the system, you'll see here, for example, we have that advanced ROI cost savings and then we have another cost savings. It'll actually show us the particular value that's associated with that. So just a way to help visualize that there. And then the other feature I want to point out is um, showing the, the details of, of the hover overs of when you come to your uh, savings, revenue, and time saved. So if you hover over these, you're able to do a deeper dive into uh, the particular cost savings, if it's a one-time recurring. Uh, what people want with, is to be able to see this just initially when coming into this report. So we've added this little drop-down feature that will actually calculate all of that for you. And you'll be able to display this here. This is sticky based on your user preference. So every time you come back to this report, this is how it will be displayed for you. Uh, but I think this was, was just uh, another way to help get the data that you're looking for within this report, Greg. I think this is, this is a good enhancement to talk about you know, not necessarily a huge shift that we're going to be, be focusing on over the next 12 to 18 months, but but a, a subtle shift in that in that what we've shown you here is is simply kind of a, a data visualization. But this is this is heavy click friction for organizations that really want to be able to see this 
type of data without having to do hover overs and whatnot. And so um, small enhancement like this can, can have huge impact in your adoption as you're spreading Kinex throughout your organization. Little, little, what you'd almost say are, you know, little tips and tricks and little ways in which we can decrease clicks are going to really help you as you're, you're spreading this throughout your organization. So you'll be seeing us focus on this more and more and more. So I just want, before we, we, we close things up, we got a couple of questions that came in. So the Great. first question, I, I almost I almost think I know who this was. Uh, who scored the highest in an individual round doing our ax throwing competition? Um, I believe that why, was... Why don't we get to the first real question, Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, I believe whoever had scored the most didn't actually win, so I, I, I don't think that's really relevant. Um, another one that we got here, and, and I think we, we might have gone through this, Craig, is, is can you add a, a second threshold to a chart? And so, again, when you're setting up that threshold on your threshold chart, you can have your, your target threshold, you can include a baseline, and you'll also be able to include a secondary and tertiary threshold as well. So you can really get into, um, uh, into using those. Now, one of the things we didn't mention, Greg, but also in terms of setting that up, uh, you can configure notifications to go out if, for example, you um, exceed or don't meet a specific threshold. Uh, and you'll also be able to visualize that through your chart state. Um, you can see what, what's met threshold, what hasn't. Um, add that goal calculator in as a column in a list view as well. So all of that um, that we talked about within the threshold uh, can, can be visualized on, on, on different dashboards that you set up. Um, so so the, that's the that's threshold. Good. Yeah, the threshold chart enhancement is such a great example of something that we wouldn't have been able to develop without our customers. You know, mm -hmm. the, the Kinexus tribe is um, is a special, I, I think we're just a special group of people that are, are really trying to push the boundaries and how technology can help improvement cultures. And uh, our, you guys are, are really good about showing us the type of, of work you're doing and the type of modeling you want to see in visualizations. And so, the, the threshold way we configured it was based on about a half a dozen to a dozen different customers. And there was just a theme of how they were trying to visualize the data. And, and that's how we were able to configure it that way. And then those three threshold lines seem to kind of fit 90%, if you will, of the examples that we saw. And so that's how we, we landed on that. And it really kind of allows you to do, you know, things like you know, target, uh, baseline, um, goal, or, you know, target, baseline, forecast. Uh, it really gives you those kind of three options. Or if you only wanted to use one, you can use one. But great question. Yeah, and it's been exciting to to have customers who who will come to us and and show us the you know the the reports and KPIs that they're currently tracking using you know PowerPoint or Excel. And for us to now have that threshold chart option, you know, we immediately go to the threshold. It's like, oh, this is a threshold chart. Let us show you how that works in Kinexus. So it's definitely helping. Uh, our, our past customers as well as those um, new customers that we're bringing on uh, every day as well. Yep. So just some closing things, Greg. Um, I added a card here. Be sure everyone to to sign up for our, our next webinar, this Ask Us Anything webinar, episode 20 uh, on July 24th. So that's a week from today. That's going to be hosted by Greg and, and Mark Graben. Uh, Greg, you want to go ahead and, and give your, your spiel on your Ask Us Anything? What it, this has been such a fun series that we did. Mark and I did a experiment with our first episode of this. We had no idea if anyone would sign up or, or log in or ask any questions. And we have literally just continued to do these till we get to zero questions and we haven't got there yet. And so we'll spend about you know three to five minutes on a question and riff on it. And uh, oftentimes we're referencing good books or examples that we've seen and at the Gemba, and it's been it's been a lot of fun to do. And if you, it, it's also been a part of our podcast as well. So come in, check out what we're what we're talking about. Very informal, fun, um, thirty minutes of Mark and I bantering on improvement stuff. That's great. And episode twenty two, that that's that's quite a milestone. I hope uh, Matt Bannon and I are are able to to get to that as well with our customer training team webinars. Um, it's speaking to which we, we also have a uh, 
customer training team webinar on July 26th. So that's next Thursday. Be sure to sign up for that as well. We'll be taking a, a deeper dive into the 2.2.9 release. So some of the things that you saw here today. Um, if you have any questions, need assistance with configuration on the features we talked about today, please be sure to reach out to your Kinexus customer experience rep. Um, also, we definitely encourage you to check out our support site uh, at support.kinexus.com to learn all about how to use Kinexus. This is a really great resource. It's basically a Google search of Kinexus, if you will. So we keep this updated, a lot of great material on, uh, on, on new and old features in Kinexus. And last but certainly not least, we would love to see everyone here in Austin for our fourth annual Kinexus user conference at the end of August. Uh, be sure to register today. Spots are limited and it's filling up very fast. This is really a, a great place to meet our team, uh, see how to use Kinexus, talk with, with other customers and see how they're using Kinexus, uh, our product roadmap. Uh, Greg, I'm sure you can speak more to our user conference. To me, to me, there is no better way to leverage your investment in Kinexus than to have a presence at this user conference because we are such a configurable system. Um, our other co-founder, Matt Palulis, likes to describe he, this Lego analogy in that there, there's, there's some type of uh, product out there that it's, it's like a car, right? You, you can learn every feature on the car and then you pretty much know how to drive the car and you're off to the races. But Kinexus is like a Lego set and everyone's building slightly different things with their Lego set. And you will come away not, not with one or two or three ideas, but you're going to come away with a dozen new ways to utilize Kinexus. And you're going to come away with a ton of new energy. And you're going to see how uh, really some of our kind of best in class customers have, have really leveraged technology in, in Kinexus specifically to create their culture of continuous improvement. I cannot recommend this enough. And by the way, it's a whole lot of fun. Amen to that. All right. Well, uh, appreciate everyone who, who attended the webinar today. And, and Greg, thank you so much for the time. I look forward to uh, doing this again with you in Q3. Everyone have a great day. And don't forget that today is a great day to spread continuous improvement.